Welcome to Love the One. I'll say that again. Wow. <laughs> Cut edit. <laughs> Welcome to Love the One Me You too. Are. <laughs> Welcome to Love the One You Are. And I'm Kyle Zimmerman, and I'm here today with a dear, dear friend, Lori. And Lori and I have known each other, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. Mm-hmm. I would say, yes. Something like that. And. I have grown to love you and in so many ways. You're such an inspiration to me in all the ways that you have stretched and grown and changed and become more and more yourself all the time. So kudos. Awesome. Go girl. Oh my gosh. Thank you're, you so much. You're amazing. But for, Help me get here. for anybody who doesn't know you, could you please share a tiny little bit about who you are? <sighs> <laughs> Who are you? Such a big question, right? Who am I? Give us the the elevator speech. I still figure that out. Um, So in my in my work life, I am an academic advisor, professional. I work for a university, do student services. In my life, life, um, in my real life, the good, the you know, (laughs) the part that's important to me. I recently have gone through a pretty big life change, coming out of it almost well, a year and a half, almost two years. Um, was with somebody for a long time and um, was divorced uh, about a, almost a year and a half ago and have just been on this new trajectory as a single woman trying to figure out who I am in my mid-40s. Got, got, was in this relationship since, you know, I was 28. So things were a lot different then than they, than they look at 46. <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of feel like I'm just coming through the other side of all that. And it's been, um, just a long kind of, like you said, a growth period, but a long, hard, happy one, I would say. That's awesome. Yeah. So you were married for how many years? To get together for 17, married for five. How many? 15? Together for 17, 17, married for five. Wow. Yes. So, <laughs> thank you. And I know that the journey, let's say, out of the marriage and into your singledom has been a little bit, like, rocky and tumultuous. But lately, it's been a lately. little fun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and rocky and tumultuous, I think, mostly because it was forced upon me. It was not something I wanted. It wasn't something that I expected. Mm -hmm. You know, I really expected to be with this man for the rest of my life. I was very, you know, happy as can be after 17 years. You know, could have been better, yes, but never thought we would part. Thought we would, you know, Mm -hmm. have that critical moment where, you know, we'd sort of say, let's take this deeper and you know, let's really grow up and grow together. And, you know, um, when we finally had that conversation where I thought it would get richer and deeper, it, it was really him leaving me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, um, yes, it's, it's, you know, just I would say in the last two months, it's really felt like I've come into my own. Mm-hmm. Um, where I really... I was thinking last night, I was telling you I went to a concert and I was looking at all the couples in the audience. Mm -hmm. And I remember shortly after we split, not, it would just kill me to see couples together. Uh Whether they were happy or not, to me, that represented family, which I kind of no longer had. And Mm -hmm. it was just, it would just break my heart, you know? I just couldn't. I just thought I, I've lost my family and I'll never have that again. And mm-hmm. now as a single person watching people, you know, I can kind of appreciate couples for what they are and who they are. And I don't sort of drown in the sorrow of seeing that anymore. And I feel really good being a single person. Like, How do you, how do you feel like you made that transition? Like what got you from ouch to like, okay, whew. Like, how I, long has it been since you guys broke up? So it was August of 2011. Okay. So really it's almost going on two years, and we, we divorced in December of 2011. So, okay, two years, uh, and 
And so, yeah, so what helped you or how, what do you give credit to in your own psyche for helping you make that transition from, oh God, couples, I can't stand it to, oh my God, I, I can see that, you know, I have some distance. Yeah. Um, gosh, I think it's all the work on the self. And I mean, you've driven this home to me every time we've had a conversation. My therapist has, all the books have, which is really getting back to who you are and give, giving yourself all of the things that you expect somebody else to give you, right? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, we sort of sometimes look to other people to give us what we really need to give ourselves. Yeah. And I still struggle with that, as I'm sure we'll get into this, but... Um, really focusing on, okay, that's out there and I don't really have control about that or, you know, that could be a good situation, that can be a bad, it doesn't really matter. What matters is who I am as an individual, what I do out in the world, what I do in my house for myself, yeah. what I do to kind of fill that void mm -hmm. that was left when my husband left, right? Yeah. When you know, the someone who gives you attention, someone who takes care of you, someone for me, these are the things that, you know, so to have to take care of myself, Yep. which is, I'm good at taking care of myself, but the emotional taking care of yourself, I've always looked for other people to kind of do that for me. Hmm. So I think once, and that's not like it took two seconds to figure out, I'm still working on it. And it really feels like only two or three months ago, I've really come into that place where I can feel like when something's going wrong, mm -hmm. I can go back to myself and say, okay, what's, what's wrong out there that I'm not getting here and how do I give that to myself? Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So I That's think, so cool that you're like, it's all connecting. Yes. You're seeing it. Yeah. That's so, cool. I mean, because I thought, how am I going to live without this person? How am I going to function? How am I going to make my own living in my own house without, you know, we had married everything together, yeah. right? So, but, you know, the couple of months ago, I was looking around my apartment thinking, you know, I think I've told you this, when, when I finally moved everything into this new apartment and it was all in a big, disgusting pile, <laughs> and I called Cynthia and said, okay, it's all here and now I want to burn it, you know, and she said... <laughs> Some of it you'll get rid of mm -hmm. just by naturally, and some of it will get incorporated into your life, and you won't even remember that it was connected to your own life. Mm -hmm. And you'll buy new things that are part of your new life. Yeah, and then it's all metaphor, me, right? Yeah, and then she took me shopping. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's all metaphor, you know? It's like we, um, you know, you can now, two years later, start to say, okay, wow, now that I'm past some of that ouch, ache, you know, some of the stuff I brought from that relationship, I can keep. Yeah. Some of the stuff I brought from that relationship, I can burn. Yeah. And some stuff, you know, I never had, and I'm going to go shopping for. Right. It's oh, so true. Cool. So beautiful. <laughs> yes. So great. Well, you said yeah. it, my friend. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I looked around the house. I was like brushing my teeth and I thought, you did good. Like, here it is. Like, all of this is yours. Yeah. You built this new life. And I feel really good in it. And I just didn't think that would ever happen. As much as people told me it would, I was like, oh my yeah, God, you're going to make happen me cry. For you, it'll never happen. For you. <laughs> so, the moral of this story is there's hope. Yeah. And so, if there's hope, if you what? There's hope if you feel the pain. Mm -hmm. Talk to people who can help you. Don't just shut yourself up in your house, which is really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Right? I remember reading something that said, say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. So even though I was so grief stricken, mm -hmm. I would go do things yeah. just to get out there in the world, you know? And even if I went for an hour, it, even if I was crying while I did it. Right. <laughs> I did it. Um, <laughs> what was that looking like? Give me an example. Is that like yeah, at the gym on the treadmill? Houses and just see them and you know start crying before <laughs> the dinner party and then you know sit down for dinner and like just be numb. But I would be there. Yes. I would be with other people who nurtured my soul. You know uh, the zombie. And, the zombie period. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jeff, that's a good term for it. Um, read a lot. You know, processed a lot. Did not check out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think. I went through the pain, I went through the discomfort, and it's making it easier now 
the past few days I've had a little discomfort and it just makes it easier to be in it because I know it will go away and I know it won't kill me and I know it will, uh, you know, there's ups, there's downs. Remember you drew me that spiral? Uh-huh. With the bad and the good. I, I don't remember. Or sad and happy. Right, right. right. And it's true. Well, and it, and yeah, what I, yeah, what I say is actually like life, you're, you're traveling on a spiral and you're going around and because I don't know, maybe it was you who said, asked me one time, how come I'm always fucking coming back to the same problem or the same place over and over and over? And I said, because you're going on the spiral and every time you hit bottom, you're going back to the core issue you have to deal with. It looks different every time because you're at a different place on the spiral but it's that same thing. And you're bringing all those experiences and all that growth with you each and every time you hit that bottom note again. Right. So it's so cool. It is cool. What is the one thing you <clears throat> would tell your two year ago self now? Wow. Hmm. That woman who was devastated and sitting in a pile or being a zombie at someone's house? Probably yeah. that you really have the strength to get back to authentically who you are. Mm -hmm. This person I was, even in my early 20s, before getting into a long-term relationship, mm -hmm. this independent, kind of strong woman who can really have the courage to walk through some some hard things because I really didn't believe I could. It, that really took other people in my life to say to me, you can, and this is how. So one of the things that you would say, it sounds like one of the things that you would say that you really needed and, and took advantage of was the other people in your life who were there for you. Yeah. Asking for fucking help. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because a lot of us don't, we spend our lives alone suffering with whatever, the painful part is in our lives is whatever is hurting and we kind of bury ourselves in there and think okay I'm gonna power through this all by myself because I don't want anyone to know I'm well hurting. He, I think here's where needing people actually works for my benefit mm -hmm. because I really seek out others you know maybe the the dark side of that is I seek too much approval from others right but the light side of that is I'm okay sharing with people I trust and asking for help and mm -hmm. saying I can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's there's a good thing that comes with wanting others to be in my life to kind of help me and, and uh, be, you know, be there for me in some way. That's healthy. That's awesome. Right? And I, you know, I lucked out. I had some really amazing people that I could just, you know, walk into their house and be completely nurtured and safe. That's so great. Right? So, awesome. yeah. It's amazing. Well, I'm so glad to hear that you are moving forward in your journey, and we'll check in with you again soon. Yes. And see, I think you're currently dating for the first time. I am with you. <laughs> I, I act like I don't know. I know every detail. I, I well, know, actually, I don't. It be multiple people. I'm dating one person, and it's... Oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought I, you I don't know that I'm open to dating multiple people at once. No, that's okay. But I'm sort are you are you having figuring fun? that out now? Are you having fun? Yeah, I am. It's I'm paying attention to myself now in a way. I'm paying attention to the whole thing. I've never really paid attention before. I just fell in love, and it was you know, seventeen years or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. Now um, I see the baggage of my life and other people's lives and things that push my buttons and mm -hmm. <clears throat> things that um, you know expectations trying not to have expectations mm -hmm. and what all that looks like you know mm -hmm. I the person you know I've never just dated and not fallen in love so this is different and it's weird and I I'm trying to ask for what I need without being overly like do this for me you know because mm -hmm. ultimately again if I'm not getting what I need from the dating mm -hmm. in some way I try to take it back to that's what's been happening for the last few days. Like, okay, what am I not giving myself? You know, why do I need that from this other person? You know, while still trying to figure out, is this the right person or not? Maybe it's not, 
but I don't want to just write it off because it's not following the pattern. Right. That well, is following. Yes, and remember, you know, this dating process is, I mean, whether or not he's Mr. Right forever, he's Mr. Right for right now because it is your playground for kind of trying these new muscles of like saying, okay, I've learned a few things. I've learned that I rely on others to take care of my needs, maybe. And now I'm going to rely a little more on myself to take care of my needs, to take care of me. And so the, the, the normal thing is that the relationship brings up the same old stuff. All relationships bring up always the same stuff. But this time you have a like a consciousness. It's like this part of your psyche has emerged above the water. It's like an iceberg that's coming up. And it's like got knowledge, just a little bit. Not a whole thing. The whole thing's still under the water. But you've got a little bit of like, oh. And now you get to kind of take that experience and look at it with that new little sliver of knowledge and say, wow, what if it was like this? What if I, what if I took care of my own need around that thing? Right. That's so cool. Yeah. And whether or not it, he's it, right. No, and I'm trying to figure right. that out because it's only really just coming up recently. Yeah. And so, but I'm also realizing that all this work I've done, okay, now how are you going to really state your needs? Yeah. How are you going to say, you know, you don't have to give this to me. This is what I, you know, just, just to put it out there in a way that's not blaming them or, you know, right. Everyone right. says he's not your husband, even though he has <laughs> traits that are like, you know, your ex-husband. Um, how do I just state what I need and be clean about it? And okay, if you can't do that, that's okay. Like then we part or we don't do this or, you know, but these, some things are deal breakers, some things are not, but I'm trying to not put too many pa parameters right now on what's a deal breaker and what isn't because I think there's still some muck in there. A lot right? of muck. You have it no idea. The first... You have no idea what it could be like. Yes. Exactly. So I don't want to write someone off because they're not paying enough attention to me. Right. Because I like attention. <laughs> like, why are you not wooing me in the way I need to be wooed, you know? Maybe that's not the way I need to be wooed anymore. I don't know. Maybe there's a whole new way of being wooed that you haven't even experienced. Right, because I'm so used to the old way, uh -huh. which, yes, I had a lovely 17-year relationship out of that, you know, 11 of the 17, but um, that doesn't mean it's, there's no right or wrong. There's many ways. I guess you know he could right. te this new guy could teach you a brand new way of being wooed that you just floors you and you're like wow right I so never knew I that even existed it's like right. speaking a new language so and and we're going really slow which is nice so as someone has said to me going slow and just kind of taking your time which is so hard for me because I haven't done that in the past really allows you both to reveal who you are yeah and see if you're really compatible Exactly. Right? Without getting, you know, sex yeah. in the way or whatever. You really just revealing who you are. And he just does that very slowly. I do that a little more, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is who I am. But <laughs> you know, she said something to me the other day, which was really great. When I said, I feel like I'm not ready to kind of reveal everything I am. And you said, as it should be. Because people deserve that when they deserve it. Right? Yep. You don't just reveal who you are. Boom, like that. And I and I when you said it, I was like, oh, and I was thinking from my own perspective, but then I thought about it from his perspective. Yeah. He's doing in a way he's doing the same thing yeah. as he should. Yeah. I don't deserve that yet. Yeah, you but you you earn love. Er, love love is something that you grow like it sounds so dorky and stupid and cliche. <laughs> but love is like a garden. It really is. It's not something that you like go seed, dirt, water give. It's like it takes a little while to organically make something healthy and strong with roots and right. with flowers. Right. You know, and it's like Yeah, and I want to make sure it's it's right, you know. So well, it's all I know is it's amazing and it's put me in a, you know, I'm just on the forward forward motion. Perfect. Well, we're going to wrap it up. 
All right. Wrap it up. <laughs> Lori, I love you. I love you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for asking me to do this. Yeah. I, it means a lot to me. And I'm, I enjoy always sharing my story with you. So. Well, I know that um, your story is the story of many women. And I think that people will appreciate, I think that your message and your story will definitely speak to people who are two years behind you and hurting. I hope. I, I hope. know. I know. So that's why we do it. We tell our stories. Yeah. We give love. And if you guys, um, if you have comments, leave them in the box below. Talk to you later. Love you, Kyle. Love you, too. I'm crying. <laughs>